Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. On this channel, I will be uploading few videos, maybe five or ten videos, because there are some things that I want to share with all of you that is actually very important. Okay, so let's start. So I am going to start with a topic that is GCD. And it's a very simple topic, but it is important for uh, like it is going to come in handy when we are going to learn other topics. So it is important to learn that as well. And maybe it will, it will help you if you are confused anywhere in GCD. So let's start. So let me give the heading. And as we all know, the full form of this is greatest common divisor. So let me write it down. We have done it when we were young, like we have uh, studied this in maths in grade five or six, like how to find GCD. So if I'm going to write down uh, like this, GCD, we have to find of like five comma 10. We have to find out what is the GCD of five and 10. So we have to like find out the greatest common factor. So in this case, it is going to be five. If we take one more example, like 10 and 20. So in this case, what is going to be GCD? It is going to be 10, even though two and five, they're also common divisors, but we have to find the greatest one. That is why I have written 10 here. But this is pretty, pretty simple, right? We have done it. Okay. Now the question is, like if the program is going to, like if a question is going to come like this, that you have to write down a program for GCD. So how you are going to write that? What are the steps that you have to follow? So in this uh, video, we are going to see the recursive method for it. Okay. Yeah. So let's start. So for any recursive method, we need a base condition or we can call as termination condition. Okay. So let's try to understand in GCD, what is the termination condition? Okay. So let me give you a few more examples here so that we can understand well. So I will be writing GCD of uh, 0, 10. What do you think? What is the answer in this case? So in this case, the answer is going to be 10. It is pretty very much obvious, okay? If I'm going to write down like this, GCD of 10, 0, the same, it is going to be 10. The answer is going to be 10, okay? Now, so I think you might be absorbing something in these two given examples that is, I'm going to write down in general form, okay? In the general form, like how it is going to look like. Right? So GCD of M comma N is going to be M if N is equal to zero. And GCD is of M comma N is going to be N if M is going to be zero. So this is the termination condition that we are going to use in our program, okay? This is the termination condition. We have to reach this condition. Whatever the question given, we have to reach this condition so that we can complete our program, okay? Now there is one more thing that I'm going to tell you that is uh, we have to understand about the limitations and the rules. So in GCD we follow that is, uh, if in general form I'm going to write again that GCD of M comma N, we can find it only if M comma N is greater than zero. Okay, so if you see like a portion like this is GCD of zero comma zero, then you can say it is undefined or something like that. Okay, because of the condition given here, this is not valid as it is less than, I mean, it is equal to zero. Okay, now, so let's move forward. And now that we know about the termination condition, let's try to understand how we are going to uh, like write the logic of our program. I'm not going to write down the whole program. I think I have already made a video. I'm not sure whether it was recursion or the normal one, but yeah, the program I have written there, so you can take help from there. But if you still face any problem, you can tell me, I will upload the video of program also. But in this video, I will not be writing any program. I will just write down the logic of it. 
okay and i think that is going to be useful okay so for that i will erase everything that i've written here so i'm like i think you have uh, noted it down all the things that are written if you feel it is important okay so let's move forward and let's try to understand like what is the what is the logic okay so let me erase everything okay i'm going to erase but it's gone so let me again quickly write down the termination condition so that you can find out what is the uh, like similarity like you can compare them actually so there are two conditions they both are pretty much same it's just that the zero can be m or n so we have to follow like that so it is going to be m if n is going to be zero or gcd of m comma n is going to be n if um, m is going to be zero yes so now what I'm going to do, like how this is termination condition, why this is termination condition, and how we are going to reach this condition. Before writing the program, let's take one example. I think there is still some doubt left in your mind. So that is why I'm going to take one example. Okay. So let me try down GCD of 3 comma 5. So what do you think? What is the GCD in this case? So as we all know, 3 is a prime number, 5 is also a prime and we know that for prime numbers, one is the greatest common factor. So it is going to be one. Yeah, this is simple. Okay, so let's take this example. Um, okay, so I think this is a very small example. So let me take big numbers so that we can do at least four or five steps to understand it better. So I will be taking GCD of, uh, let me take some number like, uh, what number we can take? Uh, let me write down 8 and 13. Okay. And now, so in this case, what you are going to do, like what is the GCD in this case? So this case also, it is going to be 1 because they have no greatest common factor other than 1 as it is. So now let's try to understand how are we going to get this one. We know that GCD of 8 and 13 is 1, but if we are going to write on the program, how we are going to do that? Okay, so what is the thing that we have to follow? So we are first going to simplify it so that we can understand the program better. Okay, so let's start. So what are we going to do? This is M and this is N. Okay, so we are going to divide. Okay. How we are going to divide? We are going to write like this. GCD of 8 and 13, so we will write in like this. We will divide n by m, okay? And it will get divided like this. 8 times 1 is 3. And here, we will get 5, okay? So this is the remainder that we have. Now, what we will do, we will call GCD again. And in this case, we are going to write down 5 in the place of m. That is the remainder of 8 and 13, or we can see the number that we get using modulo of order. Okay, so I think you have guessed it already. And in the place of n, we are going to write out 8, this. Okay, now we have to find the GCD of this. So again, what we will do, we will divide 8 by 5. So it is again 5 times 1 is 5. And here we will get 3. Again, we will call GCD where 3 and 5. So in this case, it is going to be 3 times 1, 3, 5 minus 3 is 2. Again, we will call okay, GCD of 2 comma 3. So what is going to be in this case, 2 comma 3, 2 times 1 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. Again, we will call GCD, I will make this arrow here so that you can understand. So in this case, it is going to be GCD of 1 comma 2. Okay, so what it is going to be 1 comma 2. So 1 times 2 is 2 and I will write 0 here. Again, we will call GCD of 0 comma 1. Now see, now what is going to happen? We have, do not have to divide it further by because we have reached the termination condition where one of the value is 0. In that, in this case, m is 0. So according to the termination condition, m is going to be the answer. So 1 is going to be the answer. So this is how we get 1. Okay, and this is what we are going to follow. If when, whenever it is going to be zero at either place, we, we are going to write down the other value. Let me take one more example so that we can understand better. Like, uh, you know, there are some 
cases in which we will not get one. Like, let me take an example like 10 and 20. Okay, the same example that we took before. So I will not erase that, but I will write it somewhere else. Okay, so let's try to write down GCD of 10 comma 20 here. So we have to divide n by m. So 10 times 2 is 20. Okay, here it is going to be 0. Now what we have to do? GCD of 0 comma 10. See what we get? Just after one step, we get what? We get 0 at the first place and 10 at the second place. So in this case, n is going to be the answer that is 10. So this is how we are going to find out the answer for GCD. So, you know, we have to reach the termination condition. And how we are going to reach, we have to, we are going to use division to reach that termination condition. And we will again keep on calling the termination condition until we get a zero at either of these two cases. Okay, so that we can find out the final answer. Now, now that you have understood the way to solve this okay so now let's try down the program then quickly so i will write i will delete everything from here okay so let me clear it out this so so what are we going to start with so we will need a two numbers for which we have to find jcd so the two number is going to be m and m because it can be any number so we have to write a gender okay and inside, what I'm going to write, the termination condition. In the present program, we have to first write the base uh, condition or the termination condition, then we move to the else part, right? So here I'm going to write, if m is going to be equal to zero, then what is going to happen? Then we have to return n. Or if n is going to be zero, then in that case, return m. This is pretty much simple, right? Now let's move to the else part. Okay. So let's understand here. From else part also, we are going to return. Now, what are we going to return? Okay. So now let's see the previous program that we did. So see, I'm going to write down the same example, GCD of 10, 20. So what we what we are doing? 10, 20. 10, uh, we are going to use it to divide 20. 10 times 2 is 20, and here is 0. And what are we doing? We are calling GCD of 0, 10. So what are we writing? We are writing remainder. Remainder of what? Remainder of 20 divided by 10. So M is 20. What is 10? 10 is M. And what are we writing? We are writing remainder. How do we get remainder? We have to use modulo of so in the M place, what do we have to write? We have to write the remainder that we are going to get from this case. So here we are going to write GCD of N mod M in the place of M, comma. In the place of N, what are we going to write? In the place of N, we are going to write 10. What is 10? 10 is M. So we are going to write M. Okay, it is very simple. I think you have got it. And here we are going to close this. So this is the, like the way of, uh, writing the GCD program, it's not completed, but the logic is pretty much clear, I think. But still, if you get any doubt, you can ask me in the comments. So let's move forward. Okay, there are a few more things that I have to tell, and that is like what if if you are going to get a question like this, GCD of twenty comma ten. So in this case, what is happening? In this case, m is greater than, and what if you are written this program? Nothing is going to happen. Let me show. So what you will do, you will divide 10 by 20, right? You are finding modulo and we know that in this case, what is going to happen? You will get here zero, you will write down zero, you will write down 10 here. So we'll get 10 as a window when we dividing any uh, like uh, what we can say. Any smaller number by a big number and we are finding modulo, we get the a smaller number, right? Like we can write like this, two modulo 10, is equal to 2. Okay. 10 modulo 20 is equal to 20. I mean 10. Okay. So we'll get 10 okay, from here. So I didn't even call GCD. Right? GCD of what? 10 comma 20. See, it gets reversed. So if the values are not proper, like oh, if the values are not proper, then we will 
So in the first step, it will get reversed and then it will follow the remaining steps and then you will get the answer. So you do not have to worry about this case. Okay. Now, this is clear. What is the second thing? Second thing is, like if now you know how to find GCD and what is the logic behind it and everything. Now there are two questions arises that is, what is the best case for GCD and what is the worst case for GCD? How you are going to find that, okay? So see, GCD will give you the best case when the two numbers are multiples of each other. Just you have to do one step and you will get the result. See, 10 and 20, they both are multiples, right? And just in one step, we get the result. I'm going to show you one more example. No matter how big the number is, if they are both are multiples of each other, you will get the answer in just one step. Because time complexity is going to be order of one, right? So let me take this example, two comma. Okay, done. Now we have to do what? We have to do n mod m. So we have to divide n by m. So what you will do? You will write down, and it is pretty much clear that you can divide it by two, uh, what is going to be um, zero, 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 zero. And we are going to write this. And it is going to, we are going to get zero and the city of zero comma two, and we are going to get two. So no matter how big the number is, if they both are multiples of each other, the answer you will get in just first step. Now, what is the worst case? I'm not going to tell that you have to find it on your own. And if you are not able to find it, just let me know. Let me know, I will give the answer. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. Hope it helped you uh, in some way. And do watch other videos as well. Okay, so thank you so much. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.